you go to dictionary.com. Hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it up. Let's talk about it. Okay. You, you, you're on the cusp. Can you write that down? She said what? Knowing. Knowing. Emphasize knowing. Come on, Rep. The difference, right? Knowing the difference. Experience. Okay. Experience. Can I read what the um? Sure, please. The quality of having experience. Quality, not quantity. Here's the definition of wisdom. Quality. Okay. Go ahead. Knowledge and good judgment, the good. quality of being wise. Uh -huh. yes, so, mm -hmm. as I tell you all the time, and I, and I want you to start changing how you read the Bible. Amen. 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 I say you don't know what you're doing, mm -hmm. but can I help you? Every word in the Bible has a distinct meaning. Yes, sir. The problem is we run over it so fast. We miss the distinction of what we're reading. We're so built on trying to memorize it that we aren't able to put it to our everyday practice. Make sense? Go ahead. One well, of the key ingredients they teach, especially when you go to like theology school and stuff like that, they really make you do a lot of writing. A lot of writing, a lot of writing, a lot of writing. But as I begin to sit in the classes, I begin to hear the Spirit of God say, it's not what you're writing, mm -hmm. it's why you're writing. Wow. I was so busy trying to write what I thought they wanted. Mm -hmm. I wasn't writing what God was telling me to write. That makes sense. I, I can't say enough, guys, how important it is to take notes. If you gotta take notes for three credits at UCL, why wouldn't you have to take notes to learn the word of God in your house of God? Mm -hmm. There's a syllabus. We got 66 books up. I like that. Right? <laughs> yes, sir. It says you will trust in the well, how can I trust mm -hmm. what I don't understand? Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. How can I understand? but I have not been able to experience. Mm. Mm. I didn't say read. Mm. I didn't say be around. I said experience. It's a difference between experiencing something and hanging around something. Ain't it, girl? Mm -hmm. huh? See, I didn't hang at the club. I experienced it. Mm. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> I know y'all was all sex. Oh, know. no, sir. Uh, Jaquan, yes. it was not a party until I showed you. Uh, in my own mind. Uh -huh. You understand what I'm saying? So it's the same. When I come to church, it ain't a party until I get in the dog. Come on, Reverend. In my own mind. I'm not saying there's not a competition because I don't better than y'all. But I believe I bring something to the table. Yes, sir. What about you? What about you? When you come here, do you really believe you bring something? to the house of God. Because we've been, let's be honest, we've been cultivized into believing we're coming to the house of God to get something. Yeah. Mm. And that's has a truth to it. But it's very hard to get what you aren't willing to give. Come on. Amen. That's good. I would say nearly impossible. So, we talk about easier said. I'm, I'm tempted more preachers than ever thirty. I don't know why. But Seven. Anyway, bring it, bring it on back. So we talk about knowing the difference. Let's talk about that for a second. Knowing. Knowing. So there's a key ingredient to what we're talking about here. A lot of times we don't really know. Lord loves fighting. We don't really know 
why we believe in Jesus Christ. Mm. We know what mama told us. Mm -hmm. We know what granddaddy said we ought to be. Right? Right. But we didn't really take the quality time. That's what it says in the dictionary, right? Yes, sir. It says a quality experience mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. We got exposed to him, B, because we went to church. And, 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 you know, what the Bible says, to train them up, you know. Wasn't it amazing when we were little? We didn't complain about being, we didn't know no better. Mm -hmm. But once we learned a few things mm -hmm. <laughs> and experienced the world. Come on now. Come on. That's why mom and dad have kept us so tight-lipped. Oh, yeah. That's why they didn't want you to go out and stay with other people's house all the time. Come on. Come on now. That's why they kept yeah. you guarded like they did. Mm -hmm. And so to make sure that you didn't get exposed uh -huh. to something your spirit could not have. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. We guarded you as best we could because we knew one day. One day. Oh, yeah. We knew one day, Jay. Yes, sir. Man, we're going to have to let them go out there. Ooh, yes, but we prayed Ooh. that we got them equipped enough, sis. Yes, yes sir. All right. That at least if they experienced it, they knew how to back out. Come on now, pal. You kept it somebody today. Didn't say they weren't going to make no mistakes, my cool. They say that they, they, they weren't going to fall off track every night, oh, yeah. D. Oh, yeah. But at least they had the information mm -hmm. of a quality experience. I like that. So when you sit back there, little ones, and say, why well, pastor always making me do this? Why first day I want me to do this? Why deacon I want to do this? Why did that? Because I want you to experience as much as you can of God mm. that you be able to expand, understand the exposure of the devil. Because mm -hmm. you will experience him. Yes, Josh, mm -hmm. I wish I could say everything going to be sweet. You're going to have no issues. You're going to be fire hot. But y'all got gifts. See, the enemy knows that when you're at a certain age, the purity of you, they can smell it on you. Oh, yeah. They can smell it. Oh, yeah. And for those who are young in God, mm -hmm. they can smell it. They can tell when you're changing your perfume, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we done swapped out our deodorant and cologne there, Jay Carter. The devil, he can something different about you. <laughs> Old folks used to say your face, you look all bright in the face. Mm -hmm. Glowing. And when you was wrong, you look what? Dog. Dog. Your skin dropped. Mm -hmm. your place. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. They could tell it. But we back to what we said. It's was easier said than done to trust in the law. Because we didn't really have what is required, which is access. Wow. We didn't really have access to God. We had access to church. But we didn't have access to God. So let's talk about that today. Y'all gonna make me preach this in that third hour. Please do. So give me the scripture again, Sister Andy. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And he says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Uh-huh. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Okay. In all thy ways acknowledge him, okay. and he shall direct thy So what is the scripture about? <coughs> what is the scripture about? Trust in the Lord. It's about trusting Who is the scripture about? Now, what is it about? Right. Oh. 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 It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is the scripture about? You. Us. 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 Every believer. Every believer, I would say. Okay. The individual reading it, and then those that receive it. Okay, so the scripture is about God, <laughs> right? And our connection with him. Because us ain't no good without him. So the scripture always starts with God, with God. not you. Because you can read scripture, well, I don't, that ain't me, I ain't got the problem. Mm. <laughs> Does this make sense? If I, I want to reteach how you how you read and understand the Bible. Because mm -hmm. people say, well, you need to personalize it. Mm. Yes, based on God, Amen. not on you. 
Because you can read something and say, well, that means I don't have that issue. No more. <laughs> no more. You know, we ain't never done that yet. Right? We everything's good out there. So when I start channeling the scripture first to who? God. Then me. Yeah. This right here helps me understand where I'm at. Mm. Right? Yeah. This helps me understand if I'm here or if I'm here. Mm. No connection, huh? Or am I here? Or am I here? Or am I yeah. You see where I'm going? Yes, sir. So I can't just read it just to read it. I said, read your Bible three times a day. Okay, two, two o'clock. What should I do before I even open my Bible? Pray. 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 And what am I praying for? Let's get there. What am I praying for? Understanding. 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 Okay. Explain that when you say receive. Help, help us see. Help us see. Uh, I always pray that, that God places his word in my heart. Mm -hmm. And um, that way I can understand. Because what's in your heart is, you know, everything, you know, good and perfect comes from the heart. So I always ask God to, to place it in my heart. Um, when I first started, I always asked for understanding because I was, you know, it was a lot. It just didn't sound right when I first started reading the Bible. So uh, I still pray for understanding because there are times when, you know, you just need more understanding. <laughs> but I always pray for his, his receiving in the heart. So, go ahead. So, 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 so you like to pray with the Bible open while you, while you pray, have your Bible open. Okay. Well, I mean, I won't get deep in the weeds, but that's fine. Yeah, right. You're not wrong either way, but yeah, I get yeah, right. but, Yes. Uh, okay, the same way in John 14, under chapter 1 and verse 14, mm -hmm. the word was made flesh and dwell among us, mm -hmm. and we beheld his glory, mm -hmm. the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. So so I want to come back to this problem. I'm, I'm going to make a step on the wind. <laughs> so what you just said, let's go back a little bit in time. When you had become I'm reaching for the time back. I can't go there. When you were at a point where you had lost faith in church, mm -hmm. you came here that way. Mm -hmm. Right? Sure did. You were broke. You ain't doing nothing now. You ain't want no part of it. <laughs> Give us a little synopsis of how that feeling was. And in reality, <coughs> knowing, I would say this, that you really weren't right. Yeah. But you had a feeling that you were right, even though. Yeah. Talk yeah. about it for a second. We were left, we left uh, a, a, a church, our church, we were there over 23, 40 years. Um, that we were just as active, if not more, probably in the church uh, industry and uh, always doing something, very much involved in the ministry. Things happened, leadership changed, um, and we were a part of the church like a family. And so when, you know, just like anyone else, you hurt with your, from your family, people you don't expect to hurt you, especially mm -hmm. in the church, it happens. And so not only that happened, there was a lot of things that was going on. So we and we trans trans uh, when we got here mm -hmm. to Florida, I was like I, I was done. I was I was I, not that I didn't believe in God, not that I didn't trust in God, but my relationship with people was kind of done. And I didn't trust churches, I didn't trust people in the church and wow. I just said, you know, um, thank God for my husband because he was still praying for me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we went from church to church and I never really felt connected, mm -hmm. nor did I try to get connected. I didn't try. Mm -hmm. I really honestly did not try. I had my wall up. So when I came here, I was very 
destitute. I was very empty. I was very church hurt. And I really was not feeling people. Um, and that's what I deal with is people. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, I was in a bad place. I was in a very empty place. And uh, what changed? What changed you to where you feel you are now? Um, I feel, listening. I feel like the love that I received at this church. And my husband's always been a, a great man of God that he, 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 he you know, when they say the, the man of the house, they cover your home, and, and it, it, he's always been that, that strong piece in our household. He knows what his family needs, and he went out on the limb and made sure that happened in all different ways. And so he prayed and prayed and prayed. So we found ourselves here. When we got here, the love, the love, when they say love lifted me, that's what happened. Love lifted me. Um, I truly believe, Pastor, First Lady, their warm embrace, uh, them, you know, bringing us in, helping us, loving us through all the other stuff. That's what got us. And then the, everyone else <coughs> didn't change. You know, you come here, you think, oh, well, maybe it's like, <laughs> like the time you took the time to get, okay, I can give you the first two times. Okay, let me see if it's going to happen three times. <laughs> and so we kept coming. And once we finally saw that it was genuine and that you all had a heart just to serve and to love. And we said, you know what? And then slowly the layers start peeling up. First, I wasn't very in tune to everything. And I'm still sometimes, don't get me wrong, but sometimes I still kind of am kind of, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a little distant. But that's just you know part of residual yeah yeah so so anyway the the love of god i really found that in this place and we are totally sold out to the ministry to the leadership to the congregation to everything about this church it truly has saved my life wow. it saved my life yeah. it saved my soul Come on, help somebody. And so this I'm very grateful. And that those who are finding themselves kind of putting those walls up because the church hurt. Please, please, please. Don't, don't. I, I've been serving God for a long time. I, I found myself, I'm like, Lord, if He would have took me, if He would have took me five years ago, I would have been in hell. And I, and, and I just don't want anyone to have to go through what I went through. So. So, I want you, I was talking earlier about how you read the Bible. I, I want you to, sometimes when I'm, I'm in, and I'm not going to say this, I believe what I believe. We get trained sometimes. This is not a play on words, I just want you to hear what I'm trying to say. Because we got a new world order of people who don't work well in certain situations. So this is this is what we have been teaching our children. God first, us, others. Right? Like this, right? right. Isn't that the same thing? What's different? How I wrote it. What's different? Mark? I wrote it. God still first, us, others. The new world order battles with this layout. Somebody over me. Who's on top? Are we learning this morning? Yes, sir. I couldn't make this stuff up. Yeah. Does this make really good sense to you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same thing, just written differently. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? <clears throat> this leaves me in a downward spiral. This always keeps me going. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. A lot of silly shit. 
Anyway, <laughs> what y'all do? Seriously. I like to have the patience for y'all. Y'all, I can't do nothing. No. So, so when I begin to understand that God is first, then there is a timeline <coughs> for what he wants me to do. Right. This doesn't really give me that. This is kind of like either you're going to take it this way, take it this way, take it this way, and this way you're going to wind up. I don't see the residual of back to here. Because with him, I'm already up here. But I'm not seeing that because what does it look like it's ending? But when I put it this way, tell me if I'm wrong, I'm seeing a consistency that requires me to be accountable. That's good. That's good. And, Jaquan, there is an outcome. Right? right. You know how y'all math wizards are. Gotta have income <laughs> so I can have. Wow. Wow. She's probably gonna survive. You, know? <laughs> you got it. Oh, uh, I gotta sit. You, got it. You, got it. you see that better, right? I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm saying you gotta learn what. What generation you're dealing with who are rebutting everything, who are questioning everything, who are second guessing everything. So you got to find a way to keep them a part of the equation. All I did is restructure it. Because we were really brought up like this. And I'm not saying this was wrong. In that era, it was right. So so what I'm learning is the importance of how to restructure how we're living in front of people. They don't want to hear that. The only way uh, for them to get away, they got to always be at the bottom of the totem pole. Mm-hmm. That's not going to work no more. Mm-hmm. Folks want to see results. Yeah. Right? Now, if you want to sit here and, and keep your church empty, keep doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. If you want to try to make progress in your community, you have to learn how to adjust to the time. Did the Bible not adjust? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. Jesus came and told, told, basically told the Pharisees, he says, what you doing, man? You're not reaching them. He didn't say that to him, he said it to him. That's why he called them vipers and everything. Because all that sneaky stuff you're doing, no people seeing it now. Right. Mm-hmm. This making sense? Fast forward now. This new generation, they see the sneaky yeah. stuff we're yeah. trying to do as preachers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. They seeing it now. The difference is they ain't staying quiet. Right. Mm-hmm. They go they go get on YouTube and boy, they blast you. Yeah. Okay. Really you went out there two nights to the pastor study murder that got out of there. God, I'm you that. And he do 30 minutes, Tammy, mm-hmm. on a two-minute video. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Breaking it down. Oh. Right. Look how you use me instead of us. Mm-hmm. All that kind of stuff. Playing on words, right? So I'm learning that I'm going to equip you all how to succeed in this new Christian walk. Yes, sir. If you're willing to learn. Yes, sir. Amen. Because there's a there's a cool world out there that needs your help. Amen. And you're gonna to have to help define to them how this works. So once again, does this make sense to everybody? Yeah. Alright? This feels like a hierarchy. And it is. God is first. There ain't no question on it now. But now I've taken it and made it that it's more of an accountability on us yeah. and with others. By the lead of God. <laughs> you say Not the oppression of them. Wow. Because that's what the new world order. I, 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 I'm hearing it now just in conversation. People now say, well, the church is trying to control you. <laughs> you don't have to go to church to know God. Amen. Woo. I'm going to start listening to what's happening in the world. Oh, yeah. You don't have to go to church to learn God. So they're giving this principle. They think of God loves others, so we always end up at the bottom. So true. Mm-hmm. Very 
Right? Mm -hmm. But in reality, I just showed you the lineage of how it's supposed to go. Mm -hmm. God is our income that gives us an outcome. So if you have not started changing how you are seeing what's going on, mm -hmm. all right, keep your foundation. Right? God is first, no question about it. But, so let's go back to verse 5. He says, trust in who? Lord. Right? Yes. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. That, that puts him here, right? Uh -huh. But doesn't that put him here? Mm -hmm. He's still here, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. He's still first. You got one, you got two, you got three. Right? Right. Now you got one, you got two, you got three. Why does this feel different? Say it again, Kevin. Explain. Like, like it's more, like it's more, more like a guideline. Okay. I like that. Like a roadmap. Okay. That's Aaron. That's all for one. I want y'all to jump in on this here. I just showed them something old school. Old school, we were taught this how y'all. God plus others. I just took it and made it a streamline. Okay. God plus others. What's different? You know what I see when I see that? And I I, I, I I cringe when I see this now. Pyramid schemes. Yeah. Boom, boom, one. boom. Right. That's the pyramid right. scheme. And it right. falls down. And right. guess who always get the end of the stick in a pyramid scheme? <laughs> <laughs> and they make pyramid schemes what? To scheme you. Illegal. Illegal. Yeah. Pause again. Right? Yeah. It made it illegal, right? Very much so. Well, we took we took this hierarchy, because back then it was prosperity preaching. Remember that? Uh-huh. Y'all got a little red light. Oh, you better, right? Oh, red light. Oh, you red light. Oh, you better, right? 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 You remember that, right? From here. So we had a hierarchy. God loves others. And I was just saying it because I, I, God won't let me get off this. And I'm sorry to interrupt you guys' name. I don't want you to hear where I'm going. This has been the new world order says this ain't going to work no more. Mm. Yeah. So all I did was take the same thing that's now become a wall, and I just made it a bridge. Right. Wow. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. That's all I did. That's good, Reverend. This is a wall to, to the young people now. Oh, you gonna always have a short what? I don't get nothing out of the deal? What about me? What's the what's the phrase? I'm just doing me, right? Right, Mom? That's what they say, right? We didn't say that back then. Right? So you have got to find a way to reach them by letting them know God is still first. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself, but you better be ready to help somebody else. Come on, Reverend. There you go. Does that make sense? That's good. You can't ask God for income and they don't end up having somebody in the outcome. Amen. Come on. Amen. Yes, sir. I think the biggest the biggest thing that, that's driving this selfishness mentality that's really prevalent and sometimes it's infiltrated in church is the spirit of entitlement. Okay. I'm entitled for something. And where did it come from? Can we really blame the kid? No. No, no, no. no. Yes, can't blame the kid. Let's be real transparent. No. 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 Can we really blame no. our no. kids no. no. for feeling entitled? No. 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 And I think just, just, just to add on to that. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. Religion, that's why I was religion versus relationship. Right. Religion has perpetuated a performance-driven gospel yeah. mm -hmm. and performance-driven that if you do this, I'm entitled to benefit. <laughs> Therefore, who said? Huh? Who said? That, I'm just telling you, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> who said that? Right. Yeah. The others? Yeah. So, you feel entitled? Mm. 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 Mom, you feel entitled? Mom, you feel entitled? You feel entitled? Okay, okay, why? Y'all hear it's hard. It, it's fun. Whatever you need to say, say it. You do yeah. it like that. So, mommy said, I talk. For anything. Like, 
Now you believe you should have a car, right? Why? Entitlement is a wrong thing, but entitlement is not a bad thing. Okay. Yeah. Now, entitlement when you're selfish with entitlement to me is a bad thing. Okay. I was just asking my wife, I believe it was Esau and Jacob. Right. Um, the family said that Esau, and I, I even had this conversation with my parents. Right. Esau, because he was the oldest, right. was entitled to the birthright. Right. But what if Esau wasn't ready for those things and Jacob was ready? And my, this is what, at the time, they said, well, he's the oldest, so that's how it's supposed to go. He's supposed to get right. it. And I hope I don't offend anybody when no, I say no, this. Say what you're what if my oldest brother's a crackhead, oh. and they want to give him all the blessings? Let's not even go that far with it. He's not ready and equipped to understand the blessings that he got to be able to do the right things with it. Mm -hmm. How come the second or the firstborn shouldn't get it? So I like Monica's son. Yeah. <laughs> Except the oldest brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is true. Right, right, right. In, in that day, you could consider him a right. <laughs> So we talk about entitlement. I don't know how we got there, but we'll stay there for a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did you come at you about? What did I tell you the whole time? Um, how, how, um, we want better for growing up, we want okay. better for... Yeah. What is better for your kids? Um, I'm, I'm, I want to learn that. Whoever got the book, I'm going to read it. What, is, what do you mean by I want better? <laughs> what, I mean. what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I have a good example. Okay. Our, our youngest boy, our oldest boy, when he was, when he was a baby, he had that our younger boys were able to experience. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, and so when he, when, when our oldest boy, he was like, he was going through the trenches with us, okay? But then, when the youngest boy come along, okay, we had the eight bedroom house, pools, you know, all of that, going to different places every three months, traveling. He was exposed to a way different lifestyle than our oldest boy. So, the youngest boy, when we transitioned here to Florida, we had everything was gone. I mean, 2008 had hit. We lost stocks. We lost money. We lost our business. We lost everything. Coming here, <laughs> he was he was exposed to having to pinch, not being able to have like like right. hardly anything. Right. That was devastating to him. Mm -hmm. He was devastating. Right. And he was in the mindset that, why can't I have a car? Why can't I have this? Right. Why can't, I, this is what I'm used to. Right. Why can't we go on vacation? Right. Why can't I do this? Right. So he was entitled in his mind. And so honestly, I'm glad we had that moment because had he been on that level, he wouldn't be able to take nothing now. Like he was, wow. he's at 27 years old. Right. Now he sees there are times when you will struggle in life. Mm -hmm. Had he still had that Amen. mindset, I think he would have just been, mm -hmm. oh, he, he would have been distraught when he couldn't get something. So stay right there. Mm -hmm. 
just because one child didn't experience with another child, we might need to take a knee stop. Maybe just maybe, had it been reversed, the oldest child would have never made it out. Who knows? Or had the second child had got what he wanted, he'd be so spoiled he couldn't have done nothing we didn't know. You see what I'm saying? That's what goes back to trusting in who? The Lord, which is Easy to say it and done. Come on, preach it. I can't let it go. Go ahead, D. All right. Father, you have his own. That's the child that has his own. That's the child that has his own. Well, you know, my oldest is my daddy's. That's how we talk now. My mom and dad, my mom and dad, my mom and dad, Y'all want to propate y'all way out of here. They put nothing in it. What the hell around is it? They're all sick on. They're all hospital and they're rehab. Now you're dead. Well, my mood is here. I'm going to stop myself. Don't speak to you. Don't speak to you. Don't speak to you. Don't speak to you. That's like my mom. She's just me and my brother. And I tell her, I said, Mom, you better get clear. Because she raised my son. So he thinks he's that's his mom. And I said, Mom, you need to get a will because something happened. Movie, all of the fact. I said, listen, you know how your grandson, so she got a wheel. And he thought my daughter get her house, me and him get her money, and my brother get her car. But I told him, I said, well, somehow my mama, I'm going to give my brother some money. He hollered, why? Mama ain't leaving him there. She left him the car, but he been selfish because he feel like he's the, that's his mama. He entitled Yeah, he feel like he entitled to it. Yeah. Yeah, but he's not. Are we here today? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Trust go right out the window. Right out the window. Go ahead. Tradition just gives us a title. Huh? That's just really it. If you boil down to his position, if you feel like you feel like you're entitled because you're the first to do X, Y, Z. You feel like you're entitled because you're the elder at the church. You feel like you're entitled because you're the one that was called to run the prayer meet. I feel like you're the entitled of this position. Yeah. And everybody is yeah. fighting for that position. That position and to be seen because what I saw you do in that position, now I'm inspiring to that because I saw the stuff that you got. Right. So then when I get there, I feel like I'm supposed to get all that stuff, but the Different. difference is the heart of the person mm -hmm. in the position. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get what you got, but I ain't trying to give what you, mm -hmm. what you gave. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I just want the title, but I don't want your yeah. heart. I don't want the work. I don't want mm -hmm. the story behind the yeah. glory. I just want the stuff. Right. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if you don't give it to me, then I got a whole ass to it. Right. And now right. it's a whole ass. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So, Jack, I was, for me, when my father died. Right. What? Yeah, that's what, if you want to talk, you talk to me. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> uh, uh, you get your turn. Hold on. 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 Don't you think I'm going to humble myself to them 
And my daddy was like, oh, you just trying to, you just going to start something. I, and I said, I said, I'm not going to start nothing. You know, I, I, I But you have a voice. I had a voice, but I respected his wishes because he didn't want us arguing, fussing, and fighting. And see, because of who I was, he knew that's exactly what I was going to do. <laughs>
Yes, sir. And when you meet somebody, you meet them and everybody they ever met. Amen. So you got to have a trusting spirit if you desire to not be alone anymore. Amen. Amen. Then you're going to have to learn to have a trusting spirit. Amen. And say, Lord, I don't know what's wrong with it, but you deal with it. Yes, sir. And he's going to be, quote unquote, due to be head of household at a certain date and time. Come on, Reverend. You know that offense, huh? You don't mean that with me. But if he loves you, baby, you gonna feel like you're up there with him. That's how I roll. If he's doing it right, <laughs> huh? Help somebody. I tell you, I run my house well. But guess who cooked the food every day? Me. I love to cook. Help somebody, Reverend. Help. I don't feel less so mad. I don't walk around in a skirt and wig. I'm gonna make you go. Always came up. Understand. Understand. Say it. <laughs> Without information, people use their imagination. That's right. Hmm? Mm -hmm. 
If I don't got the information, I'm gonna do what I thought I ought to do. Right? Based on where I'm at. So he says, and, 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 and lean into, into thy own. Lean not into thy own, into thy own. Mm. Well, we can't afford to give. That's why we can't give. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why y'all stingy in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because wow. you're not forgiven. Wow. Until it's your turn. Uh -oh. Right. Uh -oh. Right? Right. So we have to have an understanding of, if I don't have an understanding that I'm working outside of my realm, mm -hmm. and I'm not in God's vein, I have to be honest. That's where my trust is coming in. I always tell people, sometimes if it don't feel like you winning, it means you're up. Mm. Break that down, Reverend, for me. For me. Not for them, for me. Break that down for me. They got it, but I need it. So, the way the flesh and the spirit works is, the flesh is never satisfied. Okay. They will always crave for more. The spirit works in the realm of greater. And greater sometimes appears in the natural realm, like you on the short end of the stick. Yes. What is the real what is the real goal in the argument? To win. To win. To win. Who argues the loser? Raise your hand if you do. I want to read your book. <laughs> we, we, we argue because we have the intent to make sure our point. It's, it's the most validation. Yes. Right? Yes. right? Yes. But I've learned through life and understanding okay. that sometimes that sweet little scripture that says, be slow to speak, speak and quick to listen. listen. We follow with that. That's why we don't understand anything. Yes. Yes. We catch a word in the frame. And we go down back with them. Right now. Right now. Uh, we go back to 79, 86, 92. Right. That little girl that I was dating in high school, that girl who stole my wallet, that, uh, <laughs> that chick who beat the windows out, the windows out of my car. You know, what you say? Right? Same thing as in a woman scenario. That, that, that one thing happens with the new guy she got, and she go back to what? He did. I ain't even no okay. cake. <laughs> I don't eat cake. I don't want no cake. You, you can't eat no cake. People regurgitate what they've been through. Right. And so their understanding is you're trying to take something from them. Wow. That is the real reason why when you sit down and have a conversation, I say this many times, and it's not just for, but it is specifically for married couples. Y'all shacking up. You're wrong, but that's not the point. <laughs> wow. Don't be, don't have discussions in the bedroom. Amen. That's not what it's designed for. It's designed for two things. What are two? Y'all kiss me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we don't have discussions about anything that's not going to uplift us and edify us in the bedroom. Amen. That's a good one. That's your sanctuary. If I come to your house right now, I would feel more than welcome in your living room. If I want to drink water, this is Jerry, can, can I get it? Pass right there, believe what you want out of the refrigerator. Right? I feel comfortable with that. Uh, if I go there, so, Lady Paul, can, can I use your bathroom? I feel comfortable. Can I come anywhere? No. I shouldn't feel comfortable walking to your bedroom. Right? That is correct. Right? Amen. That's the only place, guys, that you can get the peace of mind mm -hmm. and what love is supposed to always be. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying love should be in your house. So will I be in your living room. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Because that's where you take the most of your day. That's where you relax. That's where you recline. That's where you sleep. That's where you reside. So you that are going to carry on all night, that stuff lay right there in the mattress with you. Wow. You wake up, you wake up with you. That's right. That's when you get up in the morning. Don't nobody say that to nobody. Not about four mornings of that. I got a problem. Well, look at two days, but I mean. <laughs> right? We ain't doing this all day, all week. And you're going to come down here and say, hey, the Lord, all right, God, y'all put your hands together. Yeah, please. <laughs> so we got to understand, guys, the same applies for everyone else that's in your home. 
you want your children. Should we walk around all week long not speaking to your kids and all that? Work it out. Bring them in. Tell them how you feel. Give them direction, correction, protection. Give them love. That's what it is, right? Because you need them to go out there in the real world and be prepared for the enemy that's coming to tell them, your mama don't love you. <laughs> your daddy, he, 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 he got a problem with you. No, we good. You know, we have our hooking book, but I know my parents love me. They say? Amen. Or whoever God has placed over them. So before I close today, how important is it going to be for us to move forward with understanding of God? I want you to quit reading the Bible literally. I want you to start reading it spiritually. I don't want you to memorize the scripture. That just makes you robot. I want you to start partaking in it and experiencing the scripture. And if all you know right now is Psalm 23, keep reading that. 